Yes, g'day and welcome to Back Chat. Uh, we've, we've, look, I think we've had a little bit of a rugby vibe in here at the Back Chat Studios the last uh, couple of weeks. We had the Hello Sport guys here a little while back. And now before round one, the Western Force, they kick off uh, proceedings of their season, Feb 25. We thought we'd get a couple of lads to come in for a bit of a chat. So a big thanks to all of our sponsors, to Shelter, to Whippersnapper, to Bluebet, to Margaret River Roasting Co. And of course, Leadable Cameras. We're very happy to have the boys from the Western Force in here, Rajan Pasitoa and Ryan McCauley. How are you, boys? Good, good, good. Thanks for having us. Yeah, very well, thanks. Now, I, I've, I, I start each episode. I know you're probably very big fans of Back Chat. You've probably watched every episode. Um, don't fucking, don't smile at me like that. <laughs> I ask the guests the same question every week, and it's the first question we ask off the top. We both, we, we know you're both very good um, rugby union players, right? We know you've represented Australia at, at various levels. You're now playing at the highest level in Australia for the Western Force. We know you're good at rugby, right? I want to know what your greatest sporting achievement is not on the rugby field. You can't – look, I can look up Wikipedia to see what you've done online. That's great. I want to know what sort of stuff you've done not on the rugby field. So for, for an example, fellas, you've probably realised and probably seen this cricket trophy up here. Dan Const, too, has stepped away from the mic today so we could get you two big fellas into the couch. There would be no room for Dan on that couch. He took – um, five for 16 in a under 12s cricket final, what? bowling the, the biggest pies you've ever seen. They lost. I was the under nines state 80 meter hurdle champion. Um, impressive feat, one of the highest athletic feats probably Australia's ever seen. Give me your best, boys. What's your greatest sporting achievements? Who wants to go first, Ryan? Or oh, I'm racking my brain here. Oh, come on, mate. I'll go, I'll go. Okay, let's go, Rajan. Come on. I did, um, Little athletics growing up. Yes, good. Uh, here in Perth. And one year I won, I think it was like six trophies and I broke four records. Yes. What sort of events? Uh, well, I was the walking champion, jumping <laughs> champion, throwing champion. I broke the 400 meter record and then I broke mine and then triple jump. Let's focus in on the walking. Yeah. That, that's my, I used to do a little athletics as well. That's high technique. That's you got to lock the legs. I think it's more of a gallop, but yeah, <laughs> I got away with So you were the walking champion of what? Like what? What little athletic um, centre was it? It was one near uh, near, um, near Morley, um, and it was just like, I think it was yeah, little athletics everything Saturday mornings and stuff, and then yeah, I don't know. Just That's like, right up there with one of the best I've heard, Rajan. Very yeah. good. Come on, Ryan, what do you got for us, mate? You can go back to the depths here. Oh, mate, I'm, we've, I'm going deep in the brain. <laughs> mate, we've, mate, we've had shot-putting champions. We've had javelin champions. We've had poker players. We've had pigeon um, whistlers. Like, we, we, you can go anywhere. Yeah, look, I've, I have dabbled in a fair few sports over the years, um, played a lot of rugby, and I was a big footy head back in the day, so I didn't – yeah, here we go. Probably the best, the best one was probably winning like a – I came last in a – in a swimming event, which is which is the bottom. So we're going to go up from here, our yeah, school. But I, I'd say like oh, winning like a, a 200 metre race in year 12 at, at the house carnival. Or okay, like very that, good. I don't know, mate. Look. Just, well, no, mate, just so listeners and, and viewers know, how tall are you, mate? I'm six foot eight, so yeah. 203. So you've got a bit of size about you. Yeah. So you've got some levers for sprinting. Yes. Does it take you a while to get going though or are you quick it off does. the mark? No, it does. So I... I went to um, a school that you had to do a summer sport, and I didn't really want to. I did a, I did athletics um, for like just because it was a it was a bit of a we had to do it for rugby anyway, and um, they wanted me to do a four hundred meter event. Mm. Didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> didn't work. I think I did two. I think I did two four hundred meter races, and I said to myself, "I'm never doing that again." That was a serious hurt. Like I like I have some serious respect for those fellows that do that. Well, athletics yeah. is a different kettle of fish, correct? And yes. it's a very individual sport. So I moved on from that as well. Now, uh, you boys come in here, uh, rugby union. Um, look, we interview a lot of AFL guests. I used to play AFL. I thought we'd start with a bit of a bit of a rugby one oh, you know, a bit of a union one oh one. I actually put into chat GPT. You boys know what that is? A bit of AI flying around. I just put in. Very on brand. Yeah, correct. I just thought I'd start with something from that because let's be honest, who knows what I'm talking about. In summary, while both AFL and rugby union are contact sports, rugby union is played with an oval shaped ball and the aim of the game is to score points by carrying or kicking the ball over the opposing team's goal line or through their goalposts. The game is known for its physicality 
and requires a range of skills from its players. Is that a good summary of rugby union? I think that's pretty yeah. pretty top notch. To be yeah. honest. That's pretty <laughs> top shelf. Like well, yeah. how, how do you how do you get into rugby growing up? Maybe you, Rajan, you start with you. You're a Perth boy. Um, I just my parents really. That's kind of all we done. Yeah. Um, always watched rugby. Played touch rugby, rugby league, rugby union. Growing up, and I don't know, it's always been rugby. Where, because, because what happened with you was you, you played uh, rugby here in Perth. You grew up in Perth, but then you went over to a school over east yeah. on a scholarship. Yeah, I went. Is that uh, right? I think I left Perth when I was 15, 14, 15, and then I, I went to Nudgee College in Brisbane um, for, for my last three years of school, and then I went just for rugby, really. Like, yes, um, the whole rugby scene over there is crazy, and semi-professional so it was pretty cool so i um i did a little bit i've been doing a little bit of digging on both of you just to make sure i know what i'm talking about here today and i've got a story to share with you to start with Rajan. i want to see if there's any similarities so um when i was uh a, a junior um i was an athlete right i used to run 800s and so um, there's a place called the geelong falcons the McTurner footy factory and everywhere in geelong um every kid in geelong that could pick up a footy, would be invited down to trial for this junior development squad, right? No invite for me. Um, went on, no invite. Anyway, uh, Mick Turner, who ran the, the, the squad, tells his story. He got a phone call one day and it was this person who was saying, why isn't Will Schofield down there training? And he said, who's Will Schofield? No idea, never heard of him, never seen him. What are you talking about? This person kept badgering him and badgering him, rang him the next day, rang him the next day. said, why isn't Will Schofield down at training? Eventually I got an invite down there. The story sort of speaks for itself. I made the squad. I made the state team. I got drafted to the AFL, played 15 years in the AFL. But I tell the story, that person that was ringing Mick Turner was my mother, right? So my entire career was thanks to my beautiful mother, right? And so I want to say I'm a mama's boy. I've got word that your mum sent some highlights over East for scholarships, correct? Yeah, she did everything. She kind of just... Um, cut up my school clips from here and my club rugby clips and just made like a mini highlight video and then sent it across. Really? So, yeah, I wouldn't have gone if it wasn't for my mum. So we're, you and me, mate, we've got no <laughs> idea without our mums, eh? Hey? <laughs> no, nah, i got no clue. <laughs> um, so so how, does, how does that go? So, so your mum mum could see your potential, see your talent and um, wanted to get you over there? Yeah, oh, I guess I've always wanted to be a professional rugby player. Yeah. Um, and ev- well, I think everyone in my family knew that. Um, and then there's a few of the older boys that we knew was going over to Brisbane and Sydney and stuff, and they were kind of getting their name out there. So I think that's probably why my mum pulled the trigger. Mm. Um, and then just cut up some clips and send it over and thought we'll try our luck. And then I went to Nudgee first just to check it out. And then, yeah, I, I loved it. It was pretty cool. What about you, Ryan? You're from over East. You're Sydney based to start yeah, with. Yeah. Yes. What's your story go? You got his mum clipping clipping up clips and sending <laughs> them around or what? Yeah, mum didn't have too much of an idea about rugby. Um, <laughs> I sort of yeah grew up in uh, Bankstown. Lived in Orange for three years and out in the country, which is about three hours west of Sydney. Um, and then sort of moved back back to Sydney, my old man. And uh, yeah, played league till I was about fifteen. Did all the sort of junior reps with um, the Dragons, um, and then. I was going to Matchville Sports High, um, got an opportunity to get a scholarship to go to Scots College in Sydney. Very um, good um, sort of elite sort of school there, a lot of um, resources at their disposal. Um, and then, yeah, just started playing rugby because obviously I was quite tall. Um, my position is is a quite sort of like pretty much me. Like I big like units. Frame, big frame, tall, like sort of rangy. And, um, yeah, got an opportunity to play rugby to go to a better school. So I just sort of went along that path and then just sort of fell in love with the game and like the the whole, everything about it. Um, and it, yeah, obviously gave me a good opportunity to get a good education by me uh, in year, like in, yeah, for my high school. And then um, just sort of put my head down. Dad was just sort of whipped me up the ass, sort of like just trying to like push me to sort of, push me to sort of get going there. And then, yeah, left school and sort of went into the TAR system. And then here I am now, sort of a few little bits and bobs, but. So I think a lot of people listening wouldn't be, you know, and I'm certainly not aware of, of one, kind of the the pathway from juniors through to like where you boys are now. So we might touch on that in a bit, but probably an even more basic question is that I hear a lot. And I grew up in Melbourne, so kind of had more exposure than people in Perth would. But the difference between union and league, like, like 
as players, like, is, it, is that a choice you're going to make as juniors? Like, whether you're going to play that or is it like, you know, you, you, your notes are written already? No, no, it's a product of your environment. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, league is league is seen as a very, like, um, public school game. Like, it's a very, like, working class sport. But I don't see it like that. Like, it's – and, and – and you go to the bush, rugby union is a big part of their um, culture and their society as well and that's a very working class sort of society as well. So mm. um, I guess in, in Sydney and Brisbane, the schools that play rugby are very like a, the private school boy sort of scene and that's where it gets that name of like yeah. being the private school boy game. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, the opportunities you can get in both are uh, yeah, very dependent on on where you sort of grow up, I guess, and like what your parents played and – and yeah, what, the boys you hang yeah, with. Yeah, you want to play with your mates, yeah. I guess. Yeah. What about like the skill set? Is there is there is there much difference in the skill sets that you boys and league guys have? Oh, for maybe, me, maybe for me, yes. And scrums. Yeah, for me, yes, because like I guess across the field in league, it's it's very similar. You, you run hard, you tackle hard, halves kick, and sort of lead the boys around. But and they're all like hell, hell good athletes. But um, in rugby, like fours, scrum wise, like you got you got front rowers that are not over six foot, 120 kilos and strong as shit. And they yeah. can re- like, they can move bodies and they're like really like uh dark arts of scrumming. Like it's, it's a weird world, mate. And the front rowers, they are some weird cats. In yeah. Like what? Tell me what they are. I want to know about that. Mate, we've got, we've got people in our, in our side and every side of being in the, the front rowers, the weirdest cats. They're always, right. they're always odd, <laughs> on, odd people. Like, <laughs> great, great, great. I've great. had like um, Tom Robertson in our team at the moment. He's, you look at him, you think, okay, he's just, Dumb little front rower, like studied medicine, like loves being in the library, like real, just like needs his throb day on a Wednesday. Like he's like, don't talk to me, it's throb day. What's and throb like, day? What is it's his nickname. It's like he's like, right, it's throb day, no one talk to me. And he's just at the cafe in the morning <laughs> and he just rubs his hands together and he's got his little mannerisms. And then we got Charlie Hancock, he's, he, he studies um, uh, Bachelor of Economics Law. Very smart, very smart human, big bastard. And just you Little wouldn't pick dude. it. You wouldn't pick it. Um, who else we got? Uh, uh, I played with other players that are yeah, all all real quirky, can like musical or just yeah, front row weird category of player. So and what's your what's your position? Second row, right? So you got the front row on the scrum, and then I'm in behind, sticking my head in between these two big bastards. Um, right. And then we sort of we sort of run line outs, jump in the air. Yes. If you've sort of seen that sort of, are you the one game? getting thrown up, or are you yeah. throwing people up? Oh, both, but mainly getting thrown up. He's getting there. up there. And Rajan, you're running around the outskirts. Just yeah, you're the general. Sure look you're the there. general, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like we that. speak to we speak to each other a fair bit on the field because, like, he's the the game manager, sort of directs the players, and I'm I'm getting what play it is so we can go to the line out and and sort and get them the ball. So, yeah. okay, so in in footy, right? There's backs, there's forwards, there's mids. Yeah. Um, there's a saying that. I've pretty much created. So um, so forwards uh, sell memberships, right? People go to the footy to watch the, them kick goals, right? Um, mids sign sponsorships. They're on the big money. Backs win premierships, right? We don't get paid the big money. No one comes to watch us, but without us, you ain't winning flags. What is the equivalent in rugby? It sounds like if the weird, if the weird freaks in the front row that are smashing their head in people – they sound like – well, I don't know what they sound like. They sound like – what? what's – something else there. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So how does it work in your world? Who's on the big money? Oh, Probably um, – Back. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. It's not me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been one of us sitting here. Yeah. Um, Jean's got nah. pretty quiet. No, nah, yeah. it's definitely the locks. <laughs> the locks. Depends where you play. In Australia, I, I feel um, it's a supply and demand sort of thing. So – um, yeah, a good a good fly half, obviously. Like if a team's going well, they're playing well. So that yeah, yeah. they're selling memberships. Like they're they're the, the Razzie, the Razzle Dazzle. Yes, like Rajan over here. Yes, um, the the wingers, the wingers are the dudes that bring all the club. They're the big finishers. Yeah, yeah. If, yes, if, the outside if, backs, the full backs. That's what yeah. So that's like, like the watch. forwards, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so who are just like the nuts and bolts, like the grinding? Yeah, your back row, like yeah. your second row, like yeah. Usually just back hitting ruck, you're hitting rucks. Yeah, you're, you're carrying your tackle. Are they grumpy? Like are they are they the sort of guys? Is there someone in the team that so backman in the AFL, right? They're the guys that, you know, if the midfield's not getting their job done, sort your fucking job out, get it done, boys. The forwards aren't kicking goals. But the backs, we're, we're always the grumpy ones. We've got a little bit of white line fever. Who's that? Oh, probably like a seven. I was going to say Oli Callum. Yeah, Oli Callum. <laughs> you name him, yeah. Yeah, Oli Callum. Yeah, Oli. Like um, open side flanker, they're always like the 
the Jack Russell of the team. Like they're just they're like, <laughs> yeah, and he's, he's not going to like the Jack dude, Russell he term. He's, or he's like his staff, little staffy, just running yeah. around, full of energy, just a ball of muscle. Because they get yeah, through some work. Staffy, yeah. They get through yeah, a lot get, of work yeah. in the game, like, and they're running consistently. Attack defense. They're just running yeah. all over the half pitch backs. Halfbacks are very yeah, up there. Backs. Like they, they aren't the biggest fellas on the team, but geez, they can talk. Like, and they are just like India. Like, and they've got big engines. Is there much much chat out there between opposition rather than in teams? Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it seems yeah. like the game that's like, it's it's probably built for a bit of a bit of lip. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, just in one asset of the game, like aspect, like a line out opposition hooker hasn't had a good couple of throws. You are into him. Like if you're the halfback sitting there because the hook is thrown in, the halfback could just be has to be five meters away, and he's just lipping into him. Like just like like. It's like so that's you. That, no, 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 so I'm sorry. No, so like a bit one closer to the ruck, but yeah, there's there's definitely shit chat gets thrown around. Front rowers, especially if they they sort of have a bad scrum. Um, our Santiago Medrano, big Argentinian tight head, he'll he'll yep. bloody just like come on, I want to scrum. Like he's like, <laughs> oh, hey, sort your stuff out. He's like, I want to scrum. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a good lad. Um, definitely some yeah. There's there's definitely some at the bottom of the ruck. Like you can get away with a bit. Look. Yeah, and yeah, I don't like the rucks either. I'll just stay away from these things. <laughs> so rucks are what? They're 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 the like when you get scrimmages on the ground, tackler, yeah. and then they like get on the ground. You got to place a ball, and then a rucks form when there's someone else. So over, people yeah, coming yeah, over the top, right? To secure the ball. That that to me, it. and for those listening, it's it's when yeah someone gets tackled, and then they got the players coming over the top, and they keep their legs straight. That that to <laughs> me is just like I I I don't. I don't know how you do that. I, I don't know how that's a thi- – like I don't know how multiple people don't break their necks in, in every game. Like you are, you are coming in at as fast as you can and there's guys exposed lying over it that you're trying to clear out over the top of the pack. It, it's That's that's an incredible part of the game. I don't know if you guys appreciate that. It's very underappreciated, I think. Well, yeah. I appreciate it because yeah, I'd never I'm do glad. that. I'm glad because <laughs> – yeah. There's no stat for rock arrivals or hitting rocks. It's no. just like that's just part of the job. Like that's yeah. There's like the shit people don't see. It. It's yeah. like they everyone sees like the the massive tries, but you don't see that the this fellas just you know yeah. stop three people coming over the rock. Is that valued by you boys internally? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is that is that something that you know in a team meeting you sort of sit down and if someone if you're in defence and like Ollie Callan for example, that's his job to slow the ruck down. He'll stick his head over the ball, get his hands on it, and get two or three fellas flying into him. And he, if he slows the ball or gets the ball, gets a turnover. Yeah, the boys with that, like that, gets you up on the field. That is, yeah, yeah that, that sort of stuff's crazy. When he's in there reaching in with his hands and his back and neck and skull is just yeah. Someone was here because you can't like your head's in there, you can't see anything that's coming. Yeah, in. it's just this big hundred and twenty dude yeah. just come bang and. <laughs> Like Once again, the, you stay out of that. Don't yeah, and no, I'll just watch from the back. Yeah, you look good. <laughs> He's in a dinner suit, man. Yeah. 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 Right. So let's talk about you a bit more individually, Rajan. You're coming back off a, a knee injury, ACL last year. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, before the injury, a fair bit of um, talk probably about your potential, and you've had a you know, great schoolboy career and played for Australia at junior levels. Um, how's how's the body? How's how are you feeling? Um, pretty good, to be honest. Like. Um, this is like my fourth preseason now, and each kind of preseason has been different. Mm. Um, and now this time around, I'm going through the rehab side of things, and I've probably been able to learn a bit more about myself and like mentally and all that stuff, and probably get to connect with some other dudes um, who are in the same position and um, who I probably wouldn't have had a chance to if, if I was in like with the lads full time. And um, but it's been alright. Uh, an interesting journey, but an enjoyable one. Like, yeah, kind of just taking the positives as they come. You started um, at the Brumbies. Yeah. Is that right? And then you've come back over here to, to Perth, back home effectively. Yep. So how's that move been? Really good. Really good. Um, I just, like last year was probably my favourite season thus far in terms of just the game time. Like I played every game, I'm pretty sure, and I learned so much about my game and had some really good moments and had some really bad moments, but like at least I could look back and learn. And mm. um, I think it was a good decision. And yeah, well, that's good. You're in rehab as well, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. So I, I ended up tearing two tendons in my shoulder. Real weird one, like right. real rare injury. But um, yeah. So it sort of put me back until like round three or four. Did you have surgery or no? Nah, avoided surgery. Touch with thing. That's God, good because yeah, I was dark cloud hanging over my head for a couple of days. Yeah, but, for um, sure. 
yeah, especially at the back, like just finished pre-season and to get injured sucks. But um, yep. yeah, you, you do appreciate because like I've touched wood, I've been someone that has sort of stayed away from rehab a fair bit for over my sort of career. Yeah. And yeah, your hat goes off to the boys. Like Ray slogging it away for six months, like it'd be hard work. Did yeah. you, you play over at England? So Yeah, that so done? when was that? 2021 20, I was over there for like, you call it like a medical joker. One of their locks got injured in Exeter and then I went over four months after the super season. That was good fun. Um, like really enjoyed that experience. Um, those boys really have good locker room culture, um, tough physical game and really learn a lot about my rugby and myself as a person over there. That was really good for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a World Cup year this year. Yep. In Union. Is that right? Um, growing up, do, is that what you want to do? You want to play for the Wallabies? Is that is that the thing like? That's every... I think if you're a kid growing up playing rugby, that's your every every kid's every kid's um, dream. World Cup in France would be pretty unbelievable. Like they yeah, love their cool. rugby and they're like they've they're very passionate people. So I think a World Cup in France would be really cool cool experience. Um, obviously, like I've not played for the Wallabies, Wallabies before. Um, Got to play well for your for the force, and then but yeah, a new coach coming in. You just never know, but Ray's probably got more of a chance than I do oh. this year or in the future. But he's oh, a hot prospect, this fella. I but, just, yeah. just stay away from the rocks. You do the hard yards. Yeah, but, but Wallabies uh, is like, and I think it's a going into a, a good sort of um, period for the for the Wallabies and into the next sort of five or so years with the line, British and Irish Lions to our World Cup coming to Australia. Like it's going to be hopefully a a big wave that rugby can ride. Yeah, yeah. you Rajan, you play. They call it the number ten, right? Is that right? Yeah. Which is a weird concept for me because every, everyone in AFL has their own numbers and you just wear whatever you want. Whereas you boys, it's like numbered by position almost, right? Yeah. So you're competing for the number ten spot. If you want to play for the Wallabies, how many other guys are um, competing for that spot? Um, like, like how, how many realistically would be going for that spot right now? Like five, maybe five, 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 five teams, yeah. five tens. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, the five Aussie teams. Is yeah. there five Aussie teams? Plus overseas, and then yeah, the couple overseas. Um, but I don't know. I just I gotta just try and get back on the on the field yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you, Ryan, what about your spot? Like, how many yeah, people compete? Two, two locks on the field. So yeah, you you think yeah, like 10, 10 guys in Australia, probably definitely more, and and a lot of locks from Australia playing overseas, like top top quality. Yeah. Locks um, playing in France and Japan and stuff, and they're definitely in, in consideration. So it's a. It's You've been in the Australian A squad, is that right? Um, yeah, I got picked last year and had to, yeah, just had to pull out of that for, for a couple of reasons. But um, yeah, it didn't really get to go on that tour. But yeah, I was, I was sort of in the mix last year. And Eddie Jones, the new new coach of the Wallabies. I think it's great. I think um, he's going to bring a lot of a lot of enthusiasm and just passion to that role. Which is, I mean, what's his history about? He used to coach the Wallabies and then went over to coach. Yeah, he's the Lions. coached a few, a few countries actually. So he was he was um, coached Japan, Japan in the 2015 yeah. World Cup and they beat South Africa, South which was a big upset. And then he was in Japan um, coaching Santori, and then he's been yeah previously now with England, England um, for a, a World Cup cycle. Um, but yeah, he's there's a lot of stories about Eddie and that he's a, he's a a very passionate man. Yeah, good. So that'll be, I think that'll be good for the Australian public to be able to get behind him as well. What about here in Perth, boys? What um, how, how do you see uh, Union here in Perth and the culture and kids and development and um, the game itself? Um, I think it's heading in the like uh, we're getting better and stuff in that aspect. And I think um, if we do good as it like as the force and that, hopefully that uh, boosts it up even more. Um, I mean, I would love to see the schools system like be like what it was, like what's a, what it's like over east. Like that was a complete shock for me. I didn't when I mean I didn't know what to expect. And then so what? What is it like? It's like ah, uh, like I, I when I left here, I think it was like I was like getting getting like crowds of fifty or hundred people in their yeah. parents. And then my first game for um, Najee was ten thousand people, Holy which shit. is more than you sometimes get at the Super Game. Yeah, yeah. but it's just like. Um, even like all the boys at school, like they they want to come on Saturday Arvo yeah. and wear their full winter uniform, and teachers they want to be a part of the rugby stuff. They want to have rugby camps and um, yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, the whole school boy scene is crazy. I was the same. I never heard of 
Scots, Nudgee, Newington, all those schools, and then you rock up and there's like the whole school, their whole school, and you sing a war cries. Like yeah. my school was like Scottish, so there was like bagpipes, big tunnel leading you out. Wow, pretty cool experience as a yeah. as a 16, 17 year old kid. Like yeah, it's it's amazing and the passion and like the old boys sort of culture there. Or they go yeah, watch they will come and, back. Yeah, yeah, they will come yeah. back and still have so much love for the school they went yeah, to. It's and incredible. Yeah, like I would. Yeah, it would be awesome to have that. I think here the, in Perth, yeah. yeah, like. Yeah. I think the passion in Perth is is really strong yeah. for rugby. Like um, not knowing much about it and coming in and sort of being and playing a few club games last year, and people put people care, and mm. that's the that's the foundation. If people don't care, it's no there's no point. Yeah. And and when the force got kicked out of Super Rugby in 2017, that hurt a lot of people. Yeah. And so I think um, rebuilding from that definitely on the upward trend and and winning games will be part of that. Yeah. from us and we feel that responsibility to give back to the community here but I think like from an outset like there's so many um, Kiwis, South Africans, English, Irish people living in Perth and then you, you definitely see like the passion in people's eyes when they talk about rugby here and it's, and it's exciting for us. Yeah, that is cool. I mean it's a – no matter what sport it is over here in the West like, you know, even, you know, Scorchers or yeah. uh, the basketball, you know, NBL, even Glory, like – like people love their teams over here. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's a positive for you boys. Uh, before we move off school, now Nudgy was your college, Nudgy College. Yeah. That's you, Richard. Didn't they make um, some sort of documentary? Well, yeah, yeah, hey? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weren't yeah, you yeah. the – yeah, That was my first year, eh? Weren't you yeah, the main feature? Do you know about this, Ryan? I haven't seen this before. Yeah, they Weren't are. you a bit heavier at school too, a bit, a bit chubbier in the cheeks? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was pretty – yeah. He was know. a big boy at school playing 10 <laughs> – yeah. I think I was like 102 kilos in your 12 eight. Yeah, what, what are you now? I'm 98, yeah, 98. Yeah. There's a bit of Shannon Hearn about you, captain of West Coast. He, yeah. he rocked up at the club at 105 kilos and he plays at 95. So yeah. that's yeah, – I'm just – yeah, I'm just saying. Skinnies just, is a stressful day for you if you're the boys and Ray Jars in, the, in that group. Yeah. Well, tell me about <laughs> this documentary. Um, yeah, I, I don't – they just um, – my Look, first year they just came in and said um, this guy's going to be filming – kind of our, like our season and stuff like that. And then if the school is happy with it, they'll like was it publish or they'll mm. um, send it out, it out and stuff. Yeah. Was that Rugby Pass? Or no, um, or Onion, Onion TV, I think oh. it is. And then he he ended up sending his son Synergy, but I think he's done a few now in different schools. And um, Did you guys win it that year? Yeah, where we tied with um, Southport, which is the Gold Coast school because yeah. – we don't do like finals. It's just like um, like a ladder. Yeah, like eight games, and you got to win pretty much all your games. Yeah. Love a playoff or something at the end of it. Yeah, I, I would love them to do like um, a playoff thing, and then the winner of the Queensland Con versus the winner of New South because I think they do that with the league and yeah. uh, over east. So, and then there's like a big um, trophy for whoever wins out of New South and Queensland schools. Yes, so that'd be pretty cool. Um, skin folds. So. I reckon, I reckon if we go back to AFL union comparison, I'm trying to think. Like they used to individualise it, but I'm pretty sure uh, definitely 55. But I reckon you had to be like close to sub 50. Um, In AFL, yeah, AFL. That where's that? Where does where's that sit for you boys? Yeah, I'm right under there, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I got my skins done um, on Tuesday actually. Oh, 58. That's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, you guys are bigger guys, different athletes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Less like insurance. I struggle to put weight on. So like. Struggle skinny, to put weight on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I I left school at like 100 kilos and now I'm like 117 kilos. Right. And like I had to work every bit of that, like eating wise. Like it's just, yeah, you never think you'd be hating. I've got to be honest, you don't look like you struggle to put like, I mean, you're a massive unit. Yeah, but like I have to eat a lot for okay. that to get on. Like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna just smash a like McValue box from Mac. It's gonna be sweet. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> KFC, oh, yeah, that's me. So, yeah. not, not anymore, obviously, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had to, if you had to, well, wait till you're retired, mate. It's a beautiful yeah. world out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, what is it? Is that would that be? I don't know. Would most guys be trying to hit sub sixty or like? Is that? Oh, it's, it's very position specific. Yeah, right. yeah like, if, or is there some boys up the hundreds? Yeah, it would be a couple of boys in the yeah, hundreds, I reckon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're looking at me side sideways yeah. here. No, 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 I'm not there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you'd be. Mate. I mean, you're in rehab, so yeah, yeah, give yeah. me a little pass. This is like one, <laughs> two, <laughs> ten mil, ten mil, yeah. ten mil. What about around the club? Do they um a bit more West Western's force specific? They uh, food wise, they 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 sort you boys out. Are you sourcing your own food, or they bring in 
bring in chefs for you. Nah, or bring nah, in some sandwiches cut up for you. Humble, humble yeah. group of, of players. We um we it's BYO lunch and it's it's hotly contested spot at the microwave at lunchtime. Good. Fridges are full, but they, yeah, sort of snacks early. Got, got to get all the early. and snacks and that, but you got to got to get in early for the lunchtime rush. Yeah, as well. So there's only one microwave. No, no, no. We got we got three. Three. Okay. But yeah. Between four blocks, you got to get in. Yeah. yeah. Sushi. Yeah, yeah. Sushi. I mean, where, you, where where's your training base? Where are you based? Florida. Just at HPF sort of stay Good. That, near the athletics track. There. What's the favourite go to lunch spots around Florida? Sushi. Yeah. Yeah. In at um, Florida Forum there. Yeah. Sushi Bento, I think it's called. Yeah. yeah. That's gun. That's Favorite? What's the little, 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 little chicken bento box? Maybe or um, the D7 is like a karate chicken. Yeah, the yeah. D7 is that the menu option? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know you've been there a bit if you know yeah. it. Yeah, yeah karate chicken. That's yeah. it. That's the or best. Katsu thing. chicken. They do something to that rice. I tell you. Yeah. Um. And what about how many people are coming to games for you guys? And and how how do you, how do you want to grow that? It varies, mate. Like um. Against the Aussie side, you'd be surprised it's a bit less than the Kiwi sides because um, we'll probably get – I wouldn't be able to tell you an accurate number, but the new the, when we play like Highlanders or the Crusaders, like they're definitely bigger, um, bigger crowds because all the – Because there's a Kiwi base here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and you notice it. But um, I think you'd average around 10, yeah. maybe, yeah, 10,000. Yeah. But like, the atmosphere's like – Yeah, like it's it, cool it feels and, like yeah. – yeah, it's – it's a great, um, it's a great stadium to play at. I really enjoy that um, HBF park. Like it's, it's a really tight sort of field, and the stand on the far side is really steep. So yeah. it creates like a, it creates a, the, the the fans are really close. And and we've had a couple of cracking games there where where you you're down by a couple of points in the last ten minutes, and you, you you're just like you're busted, and you're just hearing the fans just go nuts. And like we don't have the biggest crowds, but like geez, they they're passionate to see a blue. Like yeah, they're, yeah, they're passionate yeah. as they just. You hear them on when you're on the field, they just screaming yeah. and cheering and really? yeah, they yelling. Ride, and they ride the emotion. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. It's good. Uh, I wonder if they had anything on the UFC. The UFC was uh, on the weekend. You boys didn't get to that, no. did you? That was crazy. You wanted some fans. Well, it sounds like Western Force have got it covered, but th- there was some rowdy fellas and ladies in that crowd. Yeah. Heaps of them, were, like all the fighters and had a vibing per se. Like, so yeah. Conor McGregor put something out and yeah. Yeah. Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan was shouting them out. Yeah, it's been everywhere. Um, back, back on Union, my sort of understanding, how do you guys get drafted into teams? Is, is there like zoning? Is there is there a draft? Is there, How do you guys sign initially in, in the league? Well, Pop, I think like I think most black like boys out of uh, school and stuff probably go into like an academy system. Yeah. So you kind of play like if you kind of make all the rep teams growing up and stuff, you probably end up going to that academy and then. So is that what you did? Oh uh, no! I was lucky. I got to go straight into the Brums setup, mm. um, and then I guess maybe club rugby as well. Like you play good in club rugby, you get looked at, and then maybe get invited into a couple, yeah, it's training it's sessions and see how you go. And mm. yeah, it's definitely it's it's a it's very unique sort of way. There's no draft or there's no right or wrong way. Like some there's a you hear about fellas doing like an apprenticeship and then mm. getting a contract with N25. Or right. 24 and they and that's their first gig. And, and they're playing like people. club club level. Yeah. Ooh, and they just cool. have a good couple of seasons, they get pulled out and they're just workhorses and they're just like sturdy, <laughs> like hard, hard bastards, you know. And then you get people coming leaving from school and going straight into a into a full time sort of thing. I think um yeah, the academy system, you play the age group stuff and then a lot a lot of the boys sort of get picked up by a manager and an agent and then the agent sort of um sort of do that stuff for you. You don't really have like a, a set draft system like the AFL. Yeah, right. Yeah. What's yeah. the draft like? I don't really, I don't really understand. Well, like I, I really sort of, it. well, I sort of, um, I sort of look at union like they're just plucking people out of like it. It, it just standardizes it, right? It just means that everyone has the same opportunity to pick up the kids. Yeah. So basically, like a, a draft order comes out um, at the back end of the year, and it's reverse order of where you finish on the ladder. Yeah. But then there's they, you can trade picks and you can trade players for picks, and so there's, there's the, the order changes. But basically, you know, last place gets first pick. And so they get the best talent in the country. How does that work though? Like if if I was playing in Perth, yeah, and I was the number one draft pick, for example, yeah, and then the Swans wanted me, yeah, I've got no choice in the matter. Do I have to just go? Correct. Really? That's yeah. see, that's yeah. mind blowing. Like so you have choices as, as young young kids. Like you you could choose, you could, you could if the Brumbies wanted you, as and you're like, I don't want to go to the Brumbies, and you want to go to the Western Force, yeah. you could say that. Yeah, yeah. AFL, yeah, yeah. AFL. You enter the draft. You you pay a fee, but you pay like you know sixty bucks or something. Go into the draft pool, and 
you go where you go. So I'm from Geelong. I, I'm not a number one draft pick. I was pick 50. But wherever I got picked, I was going. And oh, it's here, buzzy, still yeah. here. That's it's like, just fuzzy. Yeah. yeah. Is the same in NFL league? NFL would be the same. Um, I mean, the whole whole reason is it to, to equalise the competition, right? It's, you know, if – which is why I kind of look at you guys as like, well, that's kind of, you know, I suppose there's not as many teams in Australia. You guys got yeah. four four teams. But if you've got 18 teams and, and you've got the best juniors in the country, you're just going to go to the best teams, aren't you? So if you don't have that because of the, the size of the pool, you know, you've got 100 players getting drafted every year, the best teams would just keep getting better and better and better. And, and the worst teams, like, no kids, why, why would you go to a shit team? Like, you just want to yeah. go and succeed, baby. I don't know. But, um. Yeah, there's some differences in the two 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 ones, but like I look at what you guys do, um, endurance wise. Like, how much are you running a game? You guys wearing GPSs? I'm assuming. Yeah. How, how how many? Like, and you two players would be different to what oh, you're yeah. covering. Yeah. Like, we Rajan would be covering more than you, Ryan. Hundred yeah, yeah. percent. <laughs> what was it like? Six six k. Four, like working. Four, yeah. Like oh. work. Like four? not total. Yeah, that wouldn't like be work, total. Working distance is like above a certain speed per minute. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know actually. I think I'd begin to around four. Four and a half k at work, you're like like high intensity, high intensity or like yeah. The, yeah, I want to yeah, say just yeah. above five, five, six, maybe. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't really look into the numbers too much, mate. No, <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know what I look forward to after after a game having a beer. <laughs> be. so, I look forward to having a win and then get to the sheds after after the game, singing the team song with the lads and having a beer. Tell me about yeah. that. Is that a big part of the culture? Putting oh, yeah. a slab in yeah. the middle yeah. and having a beer. Mate, like you got it, like. You can't take the fun out of the game. Like you play, I, I play the game to have fun and, and and like compete and win and like have good time with mates, make some memories. Right? Like not read your GPS me, results. Yeah, like I see the report come out every day for training, and I'm like, yeah, sweet. Like, I'm not, <laughs> like shout out Western Force Sports Scientists. Hello. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. That was a hard session. I know it was a hard session. I don't need a, like I don't need it to tell me that it was hard. But yeah, um, I, yeah, like we've had a sort of in the last couple of years since I've been here. If win, sing this team song, and then would have like a a ballad that would just sort of belt out as a as a team, just like get real tight and just like like Adele, someone like you, like real weird sort of off really, of yeah, just I don't know, it was like real. Good. We did it once, I'm like that was fucking good, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so so do yeah, is there some sort of selection process for song? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've sort of had a song master. Um, right. Tell me about that and. No one knows what the song is, but like it's just you just got to have it ready to rock and roll and up the sleeve, and then like that's everyone's in just like waiting yeah. for it. Everyone's like, Come or on, just come like yeah. mime, like just like lip, lip syncing and pretending you know the lyrics. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, Adele, someone like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah basic yeah, white bitch over here. I'm just like <laughs> smashing it out, loving it. I got no clue where I don't know that song. <laughs> I'm just like, this is the best time ever. <laughs> I was like, I don't know who he's talking about. But do what? <laughs> is there a fines master? Yeah, that's me. Is it? Yeah. yeah. The big Welcome, dog. baby. The big dog. Yeah. This is good. I, Talk to me about that. When I was in England, I just got added to the social committee chat and I was like, all right. Well, all right. Social committee band. That's what we talk. That's right. the, yeah. So there's three of us in there and we sort of organise this social stuff. Get together. Yeah. Having a beer. Yeah. Yeah, all that sort of jazz. Yes. So yeah, we um we like to take um examples from all assets of life and we and we search far and wide for punishments. Um one recently we took from the inspired unemployed boys and got one of the lads to go to Cup and Co in Florida with a signed photograph of himself from our media day and give it to them as a gift, like they were gonna get something from his face being in the cafe. Um that did was you a feel cracker. It? Yeah, we did, but yeah, he he was the fella that got the role was so filthy about it. Like he was like, he didn't even think his fine was was accurate. But I was like, look, mate, you're rolling anyway. Um, Can I give you a couple of um, I'll give you a couple of AFL? I ones? am all for okay. getting. Ideas. So we used to have uh, the Wheel of Death, right, or Wheel of Doom. Yeah. Um, stock standard. So I was the fines master at West oh, Coast. Yeah. So um, we used to there, there was like you get you had to eat like a whole um, a whole spoonful of like this like death chili sauce and you had to sit out the front. That's a great idea. Had to sit out the front, no no remedy, like no water, no milk, <laughs> no nothing. Just had to eat it and sit out there for 10 minutes, sit in the middle just by yourself and the Lord boys watch you. I'm definitely doing that. Um, doing that. We used to have what? like a <laughs> minute to win it. So you, so you just have to, you had to entertain the boys for one minute. You used to yeah. come out, you have to like do a poem, sing yeah. a song. Yeah. Um, we used to do challenges on, um, so we had one specifically where we, you had, you had to refer to our, our head coach, Adam Simpson, uh, instead of Simo, 
oh, yeah, everyone called him Simo, uh, had to call him Adzi in a team <laughs> meeting during, <laughs> during the team meeting. So, like, one of the boys did it, team meeting, middle of the meeting. Uh, um, yeah, anyway, Adzi, with the, uh, you know, Fords coming up here, what do you think about that? And Simo stopped. He was like, would you just call me? You? <laughs> All the boys are sitting there like. <laughs> we had one similar yeah, where like, we yeah. had um, last year we were on tour a fair bit because of COVID and um, we had like a random outburst in a meeting. You had to like, you had to just get up and just go like whatever you wanted. Like you could get around the boys, like go nuts. Like, this ain't fucking good enough. I just love the passion yeah. in this team. Yeah, and, just, and you had to get up and just go through it and like. Jeez, it was funny because like, we didn't work the coach up nothing. It was just, everyone was just waiting. Every, every meeting for that week, you got five business days to do it and everyone in the meeting is just looking around like, is he going to do it? Is he going to do, do it? And like the first one of the, one of the boys that did it really didn't read the room, just like real with it. Like, and everyone just like was like boo in the middle of the meeting. It was just like <laughs> it's, it's tough work. And then, yeah. But. We had um, had to go and uh, wash cars out on like Rockaby Road out the front of the club. <laughs> Um, had uh, they had to wash the coach's car. Um, we had like shave your head, s- simple. Um, we had no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we had guys like Nick Ananui in our team who he's had he's um, Fijian born. He's had dreadlocks his whole life, and he pulled it out. So our system was you could pay out of it after so, you knew what you're doing. Yeah, so mm, you'd spin the wheel. Yes, um, and they all had. The, the task and then it had a fee yeah. and like if you wanted to get out of shaving your head it was a high fee because like yeah, seriously yeah. like shave your head it's not that bad no. you take that off off the bat yeah. no, do it. no I'm paying <laughs> yeah it was like expensive though <laughs> yeah. and it was a real decision like do I pay I don't know 500 thousand bucks yeah. or do I just shave the head yeah. so but I, I loved it fines, fines is I think fines is as important to culture in a team and fines and social committee and that sort of stuff as as having good players, I'm, and I'm being serious about that. I couldn't b- agree more. Yeah. If, if you don't have good culture, <laughs> you can have all the good yeah, players you like. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree more. And I sit at home sometimes, like just thinking about what we could do, and just like I love it as well. It's good fucking. Good, I, I good like fun. that. Um, the different payout things, eh? Yeah. Nah, see, I we we have a policy where if you get the we read out the, what the punishments are, yeah. And then if you get if you get have a fine, you can pay out before, but you can't do it after you find out what it is. All right, so you don't know the punishment. No, yeah. Because like, say we have six, you got three like sort of ones you probably get away with doing, and then three that probably you wouldn't want to do too much. Yes. Yeah, and you definitely have the lads that pay out every time, regardless of what's on there. Is that you, Sean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tony Pulu as well. Yeah, he's another one. Like, I've been I was with him at the Browns. Yeah. Never seen him ever do a fine. Yeah. He's always paid up. He's just so pay. And close yeah, to that Monday, <laughs> you know those individuals and you I don't want to say you target them, but you're definitely you're looking at what they're doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you're trying you're following them, thinking, oh, you left that yeah. ball around? No worries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you pull, the kitty. You, pull your money <laughs> to like a mom. footy trip, Mad Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah mad, like social stuff like Mad Monday. What happens on Mad Monday in Union? Stays in Mad Monday. <laughs> right, okay. It's a fight club, perfect. <laughs> Do you dress up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'll give you some. Um, we so did a little pub crawl last year through Frio, a couple of outfits. Um, my group was like South Park characters, right? Which was really good, and like no one really knew what they were doing because we sort of got the. We had a game. We flew into Perth on Thursday. Captains on Friday played the Saturday, and yeah. we were waiting for another result on the Sunday. On Sunday. Oh, so I we sort that. of had to have Mad Monday like really on like the edge of a knife of like a wee, a wee out. Or That's a, wee a hard out. situation to be Mate, it was a stressful week. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had the Double D boys organised. We had five mini teams and then one of – they just had to sort out like how many costumes were in their team. And so, yeah, we had a few crackers. Like there was like Pirates. There was some um, – was uh, some cheerleaders boards, and, and cheerleaders. Priestly. South Yeah, some South Park characters. That's cool. Or just – Doing just a shotgun start, pub call around, pub golf around Frio, which is good. No one knows who we are, so that's good. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, yeah. party bus down there. Good. Yeah, so it was a good week. What do you boys? Um, we'll, we'll, we'll start getting towards the end. But what do you boys know about AFL? You, um, do you go for a team here in Western Australia? Rajan, you've got it, mate. You, you're yeah. from Perth. Yeah. You're from. You can't sit here. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll go for Freo. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your favourite player at Freo? Fife. 
<laughs> Matt Five. Yeah. Matt Five. Matt, Matt. <laughs> nah, Matt. You Matt. said Matt, man. No, yeah. I said Matt. <laughs> nah, he's, Matt five. You said Matt Five. I heard you. I'm sitting right next to you. Uh, you said Nat. What do you like about what Nat does on the field, Rajan? He's just um, just what you see is what you get, eh? Like, he's just a really hard worker. Yeah, yeah. Um, what position does he play? Up the front of the field? Or nah, like? he's in the middle. He's in the middle. Yeah, he's, he's in the middle. Uh, he's, he's moving just, forward this year, yeah, actually. Like, yeah, but he's, you know, he's just yeah. moving forward. Just runs the ball heaps and. What about you, Rod? You got a bit to say over there, mate. Uh, your favorite look, man, I won't claim I know who anyone is in Frio, um, but yeah, I do like an underdog. Frio would probably be the team I'd bag for. But yeah, AFL, big crowds, passionate fans, and bastards that just like to run all day. I look at that and just think, "Fuck yeah, that. No, yeah. that." Yeah, sorry for saying, but yeah, no, I, I swear it's fine. Oh god, like the running. Is that's Buddy Franklin still playing? Yeah. Who does he play for? Plus for Sydney. Swans. Oh yeah, that's my team. Oh, you know this too. Well, you one. Well, I used to. Yeah, I've I've seen it on Insta like thousand. How many goals did he get? A thousand. I a think. thousand. Goals. Goals. And, and everyone, everyone, everyone crowded. Oh field. yeah, I've seen like, that. That was crazy. That was pretty yeah. cool. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah. Take it. Take it for granted a little bit in the AFL. Though different sports in Australia, you know, like to have that many people run on the ground, like fifty thousand people run on the ground, oh. carrying it on your shoulders. It's yeah. a fair event. Middle of the game. Like, yeah, it's pretty cool. What about the ball? How does that feel? Yeah. You touched one before. Um, yeah, I think so. But um, does it feel bigger or smaller than a rugby ball? Smaller, harder. It's like leather, right? Like yeah. ours is like synthetic. Yes, I think that would really hurt to kick. Yeah, that's it. You got your crop, crop in the hand, the yeah. left, your left hand or right hander, or right. you guys are like ambidextrous. Yeah, yeah how's that, that That would hurt my hand, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, the old fucking yeah. I used to, yeah used to take the wrist, not for handball, and I didn't get enough touches. But yeah, no, that's how you can hold it. No, that's good. Eh? Like. Who'd be the best? Footy? Yellow ones, eh? Hey, yeah, yellow ones. Yeah, what's, what's the, the over there? What's like, the difference? Yeah, what's the difference? Night, night, and day ball. Oh. So they play day day games with the red, the red and yeah. night games with the yellow. Yeah. Who'd be Who'd be the best footy player at, at the force? Who who, who who Who'd you chuck into an AFL team? Um, Stefan one. He's one of our props. He's like one of the props. <laughs> 120 kilos plus. He wouldn't be. He'd run the waters. Well He'd run yeah. the waters. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Anyone athletic? Like Ian Pryor, like yeah. Sitchi, like yeah. the outside like backs or something. Ian in Pryor. the middle, just sort of oh. run around the the Jake, square. Jake Strawn. Jake Strawn. Jake Strawn. Good, good shoe on him. Yeah. Just um, real. Yeah. I like his kicking. Just athletes, hey? Like I'm just yeah. Yeah, they probably have to be on the athletic side. Yeah. Oh, you you look like Ryan. You'd you'd be able to just probably have to drop a couple of kilos. Yeah, you like athletic type. Yeah, uh, put you I'd, in the ruck. You'd be alright. Yeah, I'd have to um get used to the old long distance running, but a bit different to the old short shots. Uh, right, I mean, ruckman, ruckman, ruckman cheat a bit. They they sort of they just meander around a bit. They don't, they just sort of just jog over and make sure they get to contest, but they're not doing much. <laughs> they're not doing much. Right, yeah, ruckman love them, but they're all built the same. They're yeah, just yeah. Good, good blokes. Big frames. Big frames. Yeah. Takes a while to get messages from their brain down to their hands sometimes. <laughs> not saying that. No, I'm not saying that about you. You're starting business, aren't you? Is that right? Yeah, I am. I just um, finished my last subject the other week. so Finished? Yeah. Graduated? Yes. Oh, not graduated yet. Oh, no. But <laughs> I've done my last subject, so I'm just – I've deleted all my stuff off my laptop. <laughs> <She's gone. laughs> I'm just like, thank God. I'm like, yeah. So. What about the season coming up, boys? Western Force. How are we going to go? Good. No, good. Confident. New couple of new, new coaches. New coach, right? Yep. Uh, had a big impact on the group. A lot of new players that have really um, brought something, like some different sort of skill sets and, yeah. and characters to the team. I think um, obviously I think the new style of rugby that we're going to play this year is going to be quite attractive to watch and we're really trying to bring some some a game that people want to come watch us play and, and be abrasive and be and be that sort of team that you look at them and go, they're playing for each other, like they're a tight group and they're like they want to compete and win for people in in uh, Western Australia. I think like we've spoken a lot about a lot about who we want to be as a team and what we wanna and what if you if you came to the game and, and we're like, Okay, what do you see? And we've sort of put some stuff on a board where if people come to the game we wanna we want them to say that sort of stuff. So hopefully we can bring that to light. And if we can do that, I think um, we'll be winning some games. How do you say it, Rajan? Uh, the same here, like what the coaches are brought in in terms of culture and standards and even the new boys coming in, just being able to get real tight as a group. And um, hopefully we see that on the field as well. And um, some really exciting new players as well. And um, I'm just looking forward to watching them see how they go, but pretty confident. When are you both due back? You both have you both have times you're aiming for. 
when are you both due back from injury? Oh, they told me round three or four, but hopefully a little bit before that. Yeah, you got to press the limits. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm not gonna go for ages. I think it's. Yeah. I think hopefully if everything goes my way, I get the last three rounds possible. Yeah, um, and then hopefully going into finals and then yeah, but cool. See what happens. It's good, um, boys. That's about it for our little chat. But I've got something to finish off on. Once again, I know you, big time back chat fans, so you'd know about this. Social media, not. Sc- Social media, Will Schofield, social media. Yes, that's right. You're welcome. Uh, this, yeah, correct. Thanks. I was waiting for the laugh. So I was trying to figure out what that was before. I was like, okay, go on. Cons- social right, so. media yeah. where we get the people to ask you the questions. Right. You've had enough questions from me. Now this is the people's <laughs> champ time. I sent okay? this to my, I sent this uh, to a couple of my mates, so this will be interesting. Well, I think, <laughs> I think a couple of my mates might have got involved here. Um, are you ready, boys? Hit me. Um Underscore James Donato. Okay. <laughs> Question for Ryan McDaddy McCauley. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite memory of the boys. That's all I've asked. He's, what's he, what's my, he asking about? He's one of my about? best mates, currently lives in Rome playing rugby. McDaddy, he reckons. He's never called me that in his life. So I don't know what, <laughs> that's, that's a lie. That. He's pulled that's that out of somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. A lot of hung Sundays with old, old big Jimmy Donato. Used to live with him. Couple of the boys in the penthouse. In, oh, oh, in the penthouse. I don't know, just fucking getting them to mix up with the lads. Like they, they know who they are. And geez, we had a fucking couple of good times. G'day, James and the boys. Yeah. Uh, what about this? Angus Simpson? Another one of my best mates. You're right. Same house, same right. tattoo. Ryan, Ryan, who was your favourite house member in the PH, Ooh, which is the yeah, penthouse? Uh, Would you boys have a penthouse? We, yeah, we did. Uh, five of us, five bedroom place was a hell of a good time. And that was like we moved in just before COVID and so we just got tight in like lockdown. So, oh, favourite member, controversial. I'd have to say, I'd have to say Big Jim, Big Jimmy the Nuts. Okay. Yeah. Shout out. Very uh, high as of highs and terrible bloke. So like real good, real good mate, terrible bloke. Yeah. Perfect. Sounds like an absolute <laughs> ripper. What about this one? Kate Barto. We get this quite often. Uh, it's not usually Kate, but thanks for running in, Kate. How do each of the boys like their eggs? How do you have your eggs, fellas? Oh, fried. Is that fried? Yeah, fried. Eggs. Both fried. Yeah, it's a bit I boring. Huh? Like good poached. Yeah, hey, good. <laughs> just just uh, easy over. Just yeah. turn over five seconds on the on the toast. Very good. Yeah. Uh, Liam Jones asks for both the boys, what's next after rugby once your careers are over? <sighs> this freaks me out, this. You said, you said modelling to me. You no, wanted to modelling? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to think I'd put my business degree to some sort of use, but I couldn't see myself in an office. No, no way. No. Yeah, no Correct. Way. Just put a studio in your, um, in your garage, garage underneath your house and you can do podcasts. Because, yeah. uh, hang on, I forgot to ask about this. Yes. On the road with Rhino. Oh, yes. Is that correct? Yeah, What's I've that? sort of been thrown in the deep end with that this year. Um, what is it? Your team sort of hit me up going, we've got an idea for you. So I've just sort of, we've done a few episodes, filmed them, they'll be coming out throughout the season, I think, but just sort of getting to know the force players and what they do outside of rugby in a in a bit more of a, so we've taken a couple of boys out to a farm in Jin Jin. Um, one of the boys is a tradie, so sort of just um, got to know how what his like sort of pathway was, a few different stories sort of trying to, yeah, connect the fans with the with the playing squad a cool. little bit more. So I've sort of just hosted that, which is a bit weird for me to say. Have you not, d- yeah, we have you done much of it? Not really. Like and like I like to chat and stuff, but I've never really put my hand out for sort of media sort of stuff. But they just sort of hit me up and I was like, you know what, get outside the comfort zone a bit and Good. have a go at it. So that'll be interesting to where see. Where are you having where are you gonna take Rajan? Oh, to the barber, get me a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a lane, yeah. bro. What's after rugby for you? I mean, how old are you, Rajan? Uh, just turned 21. Oh, shit. That's a hard question. Um, uh, if someone asked me that as a 21-year-old, I would not have been able to answer. Yeah, what do we do after rugby? Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Come on, give us an answer. No, I really don't know, to be honest. Um, maybe... Well, I, don't really I, could, I reckon I could help you. I, when I was doing some research, I saw some interviews, interviews you'd done in the past and you spoke about... Um, yeah, you wanted to play for the Wallabies, but but also you know helping the you know those younger generations kind of uh, look up to be wanting to be a Wallaby and wanting to 
you know, play rugby for their country or play rugby at the highest level in their state. Like, yeah, maybe like yeah, coaching or something, mentoring some role like that would be pretty cool. You, yeah, is that important to you? That sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, that's um, the way that kids look at it. I quite uh, yeah, yeah. I think maybe coaching or something like that in that role, yeah, mentoring. I definitely see you doing that. Yeah. Just another Oz. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, nah, I don't know. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. Boys, it's been a pleasure. Um, we're done and dusted here on Back Chat. Big thanks to our sponsors, Whippersnapper Whiskey, Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co., and Leadable Cameras. Round one is the 25th of Feb, which this episode will be coming out a couple of days before that. Make sure you get down there. Where do you play? H- what, what's the stadium called? HBF. HBF Stadium. Um, take the family down there. I've been to one game before in my life and it was a good show. So take the kids down there. Get around these boys. Get around Western Australia. Anything you want to finish with, lads? No, thanks for having us. Yeah. Pleasure. Good work. Well done, boys.